Okay, hello everyone, and uh, welcome to this uh, stream. Uh, this uh, is Let's Learn Harvester. So, uh, Harvester is a new, brand new open source uh, project by Rancher, and it is uh, basically open source hyper converged infrastructure software built on top of Kubernetes. So, uh, there are a lot of uh, moving pieces. Uh, around it, so a lot of technologies around it, a lot of good technologies around it. Uh, you have uh, Kubernetes, you have KubeWord, you have Longhorn, and uh, then you try to mix and match these and try to build a very good, uh, you know, uh, good software, good, very good solution on top of it uh, to solve a very, uh, I would say, a very big problem. Uh, not a big problem, but it's a very, uh, a very nice way to uh, open source, uh, provide open source solution to a problem which no one thought uh, a couple of years back would have been possible. But now, with the maturity of the open source tools out there, uh, like the cloud native tools, Kubernetes is is kind of getting the base layer uh, fully matured, and uh, you know it's stabilizing very much and very quickly in in the releases, uh, all the all the alpha, beta, and the stable features. Uh, so now it's the time that uh, we think ahead and we build started start building on top of Kubernetes and provide more. Uh, you know, or productive solutions uh, from that. So, and that's what uh, Rancher Labs has done uh, by creating Harvester. So, on on a very high level, uh, when when you will think about it, uh, managing virtual machines, uh, you know, uh, from on top of Kubernetes uh, using KubeWord, and then you have a storage solution, storage backend as Longhorn as well. So, it it might sound uh, like a lot of uh, it might sound easy or tough, I don't know. Uh, depends on your knowledge base. But there are a lot of moving pieces out there. Uh, and for for making it easy, for making the concepts, the architecture, all these things easy, uh, I have uh, Sheng today with me. So welcome, Sheng. And Sheng is a uh, senior engineering manager at SUSE. He is uh, actually managing uh, the uh, two great things, which is Longhorn and Harvester. So. Uh, there is active development on both sides of the project, and uh, he is the one who is uh, managing, contributing, uh, doing all these, and even talking about it right now on the show. So there are a lot of moving pieces, and there are a lot of responsibilities that Sheng has taken up, and uh, he is uh, uh, the core contributor of, of uh, uh, these two projects and taking it to uh, the next level. Uh, Harvester, though, it's in very, very early stages, uh, but uh, right now, if you begin, I would say uh, you would see the journey and you would see it getting matured and uh, you can be a part of it by contributing to it. And all these things uh, we'll be talking about uh, with uh, Sheng. So Sheng, yeah. welcome to the stream. Uh, you want to introduce a little bit more about yourself? Yes, thank you, Sam. So uh, my name is Shen Yang. So you might notice that I have the same first name as our Rental Lab CEO. And of course, now currently the success uh, the president of engineering, Shen Liang. Yeah, so, well, people get do get mixed up our email a lot, but um, I'm already getting used to it. But uh, long story short, I joined Rancher Labs about six years ago as one of the, the first bunch, batch of engineers joining Rancher Labs from like uh, Citrix uh, because I was working with uh, Shang and Will on the Citrix for Cloud Stack as well and the cloud.com before that. And uh, uh, before that, I was at Intel. I was um, uh, responsible for the KVM, the kernel virtual machine, and the Intel since like 2007 to around, around 2011. So contribute a lot of kernel patch then, and then switch my path to the cloud orchestration and the join the cloud.com, then Citrix, and now the Rancher Labs, oh, of course. Finally, now the SUSE. So the six years I spent at uh, like since I joined the Rancher Labs, I'm mainly responsible for, for a long-form project. And before that, you might know there's another project called Conway, which is the driver we want to create it for the Docker at the time. And also I respond for another uh, project, which is widely used in the K3S and uh, uh, Kind, the Kubernetes in, in Docker. And it's, that's its local path provisioner. And now I also have the responsibility to running the project Harvester. So uh, that's a little bit my, about myself. So uh, I want to talk a little bit more on Harvester. Of course, it's our topic today. So in fact, uh, the idea of Harvester is coming back a long, long time. 
some of you, if you are like the old follower for the Rancher Labs, you might know there's something called the Rancher VM. And that Rancher VM, VM is created around 2015, which is the, basically the uh, a couple months, a few months after Rancher Lab was founded. So that that's, um, Rancher VM solution at the time was targeting to run VMs inside the containers using the simple normal Docker run command. So in the end, the Rancher VM become um, haven't really mature into the Kubernetes. We do do some did something there, but the Rancher VM we have uh, archived the project in around 2018 because we don't really see a much attraction there. And the, the one of the reason is um, when you think about uh, the VMs or the containers. In fact, there are many other projects like Rancher VM, including Vertlet, and of course now the Kubevert. They all aiming to um, somehow make two container and VMs working well together. So, but in the end, there just doesn't seem like enough demand. And I know the Kubevert project also seems like have no activity since 2019. And the only like VM based container solution, which is currently active, is the Kubevert. So Kubert community, the Red Hat also donated Kubert to the CNCF to ensure its uh, uh, continuity. And but even even in that case, what we have observed is from the market, there are many many users want to run like Kubert, like inside Kubernetes, and also provide to provide with VM support into then uh, into their um, Kubernetes clusters to run the VM side side by side was the containers. The demand we saw demand is there, but it's not really that big compared to say what is user asking for running on the Kubernetes. But another thing we also noticed that if you think about about what about like VMware and Newtonix. The VMware 2019 revenue is about I think uh, 60 billion dollar and Newtonix is about one or some like a single number billion dollars. That market itself, in fact, is pretty big. And of course, you you um, if you don't count like some say say AWS or other cloud providers, even on the on premises side, there's a big market which is owned basically by the VMware and Nutanix right now. And what they do, they have the solution to run which machines well on the developmental nodes, and they can you can build a data center out of that. Why? So, but why we don't really see an, an another competitors or even like open source competitors to the Newtonix and VMware? One of the reason um, we think, as by we, I mean the, the folks in the Rancher Labs are now in the SUSE, we think the things is because it's in fact that's just a different market and a different audience where you have to deal with when you starting to run on the like say the Belmonto and the VM those stuff and they are not going to looking forward for Kubernetes because well you know the Kubernetes is become very very popular and more and more popular right now but still that still consider small compared to what is really installation base for the VMware and the tonics. And another thing is there's a lot of lot of efforts. I think billions of like hundreds of millions of billions of dollars put into another technology, which is no longer seen as available right now. And you might know what I'm talking about because that is OpenStack. So the open source solution seems um, the OpenStack at the time seems like a, a, a silver bar silver bullet to solve all those virtualization orchestration problem and to beat VMware and to beat Newtonix because they essentially provide everything, right? But in the end, because of the complexity and the huge cost to deploy the system, like not from the cost side, but from the resource side and overhead side, and open so OpenStack, in fact, doesn't really meet the expectation of the of the companies. There's a lot of people, like a lot of big companies, I think every big company you know the name of has invested in the OpenStack. But in the end, it just due to various reasons, as I mentioned before, it doesn't look it doesn't work out. And that is the one thing we think 
it's like a lot of resources are spent in the open stack without like um, instead of like building a really proper open source alternative to the VMware and to the Newtonix. And that's just one missed chance there. Okay, so you might notice there's a small complaint, a small another product called Promax, and it's still open source. And you might argue that that's is the, another open source competitor there. But on the market share side, we don't really see the Promax and the, the VMware and Newtonix at the same level. So that is why when we think when we saw the Kubernetes and we saw we think there will be opportunities for us to do something about that, to change the status quo, to change the monopoly of the VMware and the Nutonix. And what we got right, and what we have worked out is the Harvester. So Harvester is um, an open source hyper-converged infrastructure software. And of course, it's building on the Kubernetes and relay on the Kubernetes to do the orchestration and it's building on top of the Kubevert to provide the virtualization layer for the VMs and the Longhorn to provide the persistent storage layer for the VMs. We have other, other, a few other components like Minion for the image repo and the Motas for the network component for the network. But in the end, what we want to have is uh, to make a product that doesn't require, in fact, doesn't really require the Kubernetes knowledge for you for user to use it well. Because we know that the, the learning curve for the Kubernetes is still pretty big. If you like have a, um, of tens of years experience manage VMs and things like two, early 2000 to like, and if you have the experience morning VM, you know the um, verb, you know the um, say, the words like terms like the VLANs and the VPC and those stuff. And then you come to the Kubernetes well, everything is flat, and you have to learn what is pod, what's the PVC, what is PV, what's the storage class, right? And also, you probably have to contact with more concept like every other few months because there are always new objects coming out, right? So that is one part we found that why there's not many interesting in the VM, uh, like using Kubernetes to replace like the, the VMware or Nutanix, even though we do think the technology is almost there. So that's the one part of a gap we want to create harvest to address. You don't need to do the very complex YAML processing and uh, to understand every um, caveat of the usage of the covert or on the Longhorn. And those things should just work for you. So that's really the one target, the goal for the harvester. All right. Sorry, was finding uh, difficult to find the mute button sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So I mean that's pretty interesting. Uh, so yes, Nutanix and VMware have been in this space and uh, they're doing really well. Um, and uh, but the solutions like this, I think, will will start a new wave where people would definitely start think uh, about the first about the maturity, like I said earlier, of Kubernetes. Like it is there now and uh, it is there to use to productionize, to production grade, 15,000 nodes, 5,000 nodes. So people have battle tested it against uh, all sorts of production clusters. So it is stable and it is working fine. Now is the time when we try to abstract uh, more and more out of it. And we try to abstract the learning curve uh, from the yeah. from the people who haven't, you know, people who don't, maybe I would not say don't want to learn, but uh, it's just not uh, that much required sometimes. Yeah. Sometimes it's not required to learn all the concepts of Kubernetes to just, uh, you know, do simple things. So yeah. uh, so that's what, and VM management using KubeWord and having a storage solution uh, backed up. So that's, that's pretty interesting. So um, uh, what about the uh, components? So what components overall are there in, in Harvester? What are the building blocks of, of it? Yeah, so in fact, uh, Harvester is building, the architecture itself is pretty simple. So um, Harvester currently offer two modes of uh, operation. One is we call the HCI mode, which is you can install a Harvest ISO on any environmental node, and then you can form a cluster there. And another one is we call the app mode, which you can deploy Harvester as a um, Helm chart on your cluster 
but we are going to, but the app mode do have some caveats, which I'm going to talk about later. So in the HCI mode, what we have is first we need operation system. And because uh, we obviously we are going to choose one of the most popular Kubernetes tool there, which is K3S. Then we are choosing the K3OS, which is basically the minimum, the minimum, on OS and bundled with K3S to run the harvest right now. So on top of that, once we have the K3OS, OS, we have of course a K3S OS running to form the Kubernetes cluster. And then we are installing the Kubevert, certain version of Kubevert, certain version of Longhorn, and the Minion, certain version of Minion on top of that. And if you are running at HCI mode, we're also going to install the Maltus, which is going to provide the multiple network support for your VMs, as, as well as one of the VLAN, the VLAN plus CNI plugin, which we created to support the VLAN networking across the Kubernetes network, across your nodes. So those are basically the major components of Harvester. Of course, we also have uh, some other components like Harvest UI and the server stuff, and but that is uh, uh, what we have created and what we have worked for the last like half a year. Right to to create to to as the glue to like glue those things together. So we have a base uh, like so first we have a bare metal server on top of yeah. it we have K three OS and then we have our K three S uh, with so K three S but we do any modifications or it's just the plain K three S installation. No, on top we don't do have any modifications. So it's basically just the pan K three S plus the the Motas plugins and CI oh, yes. plugin and also the VLAN. Well, C VLAN CI plugin. Yes. Okay. So on top of that, we have KubeVert, and uh, then we have Longhorn, Minio, yeah. and uh, Multus for the networking and the custom VLAN solution because yeah, networking is getting complex on the top layer, so uh, that has to be there. So yeah. So yeah. so That's the reason. Good. Yeah. So the reason we have the VLAN solution there is because the the, the VLAN. Yeah, if you think about that, you are doing the cloud. You are always using cloud provider, and in the like more like a new age of the virtualization, you're probably never going to touch VLAN. But if you are like operating on the data center, the VLAN isolation is definitely basically just a must thing to have. So that's the one thing. Like if you talking with the VM operators of the VM admins, that's what they care about. How do I isolate my network? Well, I need to some. Isolation as the 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 very straightforward the most straightforward way is doing it through the VLAN, but of course you need to program your switch and those stuff for it. Yeah, but that's why the VLAN is there, and uh, and also for every VM created by the harvester, we also by default enable the management network, which is essentially the Kubernetes overlay networking. So that's why we have we are going to very likely have two networks. One is management network, another is VLAN networking, and they come together by using the Motus, yeah, to to make sure that your VM can have a simultaneous access to two networks. Okay, so I haven't uh, played around with Multus before. So how different it would? Uh, I mean, you would say it in comparison with the other uh, networking solutions that are out there. Yeah, so in fact, Motus itself is um, not a network solution. So uh, besides Motus, so, so in the Harvest HCI's case, the Motus is going to be acting as glue between like a, to glue the flannel, which is mm -hmm. as default for the K3S mm -hmm. and K3OS OS and what is VLAN, VLAN CNI is. So Motus is the uh, CNI framework created by Intel, I believe, and they, they basically the only way, the only, only thing about no, Motas is you can think about that if you enable Motas, then you can have a multiple thing I plug into that, and then your container will going to be run, able to run the multiple networks. So that's an, an, anything about Motas. So the overlay network is still going to be provided by the flannel in the Harvest SCI case, but I can imagine that any other overlay networking like Calico or Canal, they should be like running, it should be able to be run with the Motas alongside with another CI plugin as well. Okay. Yeah, so we have a default uh, uh, KTS installation. We have Flannel over there, and then the Multus will connect or glue, like you said, uh, the uh, Flannel and the VLAN uh, portion. Yeah. Yeah, of okay. course, you can also just select uh, if you don't want to have a VLAN networking or you like using the app mode, and then you can just use the overlay networking to bridge all your net to bridge all your VMs. 
So you said there are two uh, versions of it. One is the uh, the bare metal version, which is the HCI, and uh, using the ISO file, you uh, you install all the harvester uh, uh, software over there. And another one is the development version. Yeah. So another one. Yeah, we. Uh, previously called the dev version, developer version, and now later we called it like app version, but basically the same. It's, okay. uh, uh, it's just a way for you to install Harvest as a Helm chart. And in that Helm chart, we are going to package the certain version of Longhorn, certain version of Covert. And uh, for that to work, you probably shouldn't have your Longhorn or Covert on the system. So, but one thing, there's some consideration here. So why we don't really push the app mode so much is because, well, it's very easy to install it on your local Kubernetes cluster. But the problem is it's very hard for us to support it because there's a lot of things, for example, um, uh, like say how much how much CPU memory you have on your nodes and also that do you do you like if you Kubernetes cluster, you know, did really have hardware assistant virtualization function? Because normally, if you like provision a like normal Kubernetes, you don't really know, right? So only a certain providers have that. Yes. And also, and uh, always, if you are going to have app mode, many users are going to ask they can I use like a uh, Kubernetes along with the Harvester, like install Kubernetes chart and then Harvester chart, or can I use Longhorn with it? And then you are going to have, uh, from, from our perspective, that's going to introduce a lot of compatibility problems, which is really hard for us to like to support. So in the end, the app mode currently is there, and we call it uh, developer mode for, it's in fact, for a reason. It's because that it's not going to, at least now, we don't plan that to be a production great stuff, production grade setup we have. So if you like want to run Harvester in in the future, we're going Harvester going to have GA. And if you want to run that in production environment, it's better. In fact, it's probably at, uh, we still haven't decided if we want to like support like app mode or not in the GA, but it's very likely you probably need to have the Belmental node and install the HCI mode. And then we know that okay, so from Apps from like OS and the to the CNI to everything. We know this is what we can trust, and we know this thing has been validated. And then we can have more, um, more focus on like uh, fixing issues and have the enhancement features without like really worry about what's the weird combination you might have with your like harvesting installation. So that's the one part is the is really driven by the supportability of the product. Okay, and uh, when you when you say the uh, the K three OS is used, uh, so uh, now that uh, it's SUSE, so will it be K three OS or I mean, what's the future of that? I mean, I've asked yeah. the question multiple times actually. Yeah, that's, that's, that's a very very good question. So we got asked a lot about that. So in the end, when I will imagine that when the Harvester win GA K three OS will not be there. So mm -hmm. internally, we have a plan to. Um, in, in the in across SUSE and the old Rancher Labs, we have planned to replace case OS with some adaptable adaptable distribution like minimal OS, but we haven't decided what is that yet. So, but we um, we don't really envision like the the case OS itself will be in the Harvest GA. So that's a but the, which OS is going to be? Um, that's still yet to see. Okay. Yeah, but it will be super optimized because Suse has the you know now has the the expertise on the on the OS front and uh, with with uh, the containerization thing, I think the best of both breeds will come together and uh, there will be a good solution. Made yeah, much better than KWS. Yeah, definitely. So, what about the architecture? Can we see the architecture for for Harvester? Can you just pull up the architecture? Yeah. So let me give you a moment. All right, so can you see my screen? Yes. Can you just see the architecture or you see the whole thing? Only the architecture. Okay, that's good. 
yeah. So the architecture, as you can see here, is in fact pretty simple. And uh, we just have a. This is of course HCI. And when you have the the node, and the, as I mentioned, you have KSROS running on that. And you can see that Longhorn and Kubert installed within the KSROS. In fact, those are deployed as Helm chart internally by the, by the Harvest as well. So we also have the Minion. And you might wonder what Minion is doing here. And Minion is, in fact, acting as a, a image store for the whole cluster. So when we have a feature like if you, um, of course, if you want to start a VM, you better have the image for the VM. So those images can be put and from the internet and stored in the menu. And the menu, in fact, is also highly available. And uh, when you, so that's that means that if you want to go down the menu cluster, will still be working and hold this uh, setup HCI. Uh, harvester setup cluster will still be working. So the menu we are going to support supply the VM images to all the VMs. And you can also see that we currently on this diagram, we have defined like two VLANs as long as also um, another management networking. And you can see that the VMs can select to connect uh, the uh, management networking as one of the VLANs or just management networking. So that's the that's the whole architecture of the harvester. It's in fact extremely simple, and uh, and as as I mentioned before, that KSROS part that part might change, but others might likely will stay there um, for the for the GA release. So the Cubebird uh, uses which kind of images? Like it's uh, the raw images. Yeah, so Kubert in fact supports uh, multiple kind of images. The, the most common use one is the raw image and the QCOW2 images, mm -hmm. and those are uh, supported by the mean uh, by our uh, when you import the image to the menu, those are supported as well. In fact, we also support uh, uh, currently we also support a few other types like TarGZ and uh, if you like TarGZ raw image or TarGZ um, have table about uh, the um, uh, cute quad two images, and those can be used as well. So I mean, uh, like people can bring their own images as well and store in menu. Ah, uh, yes. Okay. So people can always bring their own images. So, but if you are um, running KVM, definitely no problem. Qcal image, uh, like Qcal and the raw image is default in the KVM. If you're running VMware, uh, you might need to do a uh, image conversion from the VMDK into the Qcal or raw image, and then you can be imported imported into our image store, image uh, image repo store powered by the menu. Okay. So is there any tooling uh, that is there to convert the images? I mean, to uh, create the images for menu uh, in Harvester? Uh, or yeah, so in fact, it's uh, uh, for the like converting that part is uh, need to be. I think a Cumin image can do that. Cumin image tool can do that. But for the importing the image, in fact, it's very very simple. I can in fact show a quick demo on that. All right, so can you see my screen? Yep. Oh, OK. Yeah, so now you see is this is the Harvester 0.1 release. We just uh, like released the uh, last December, in fact, late last December, just before the Christmas. I'm very happy we got it out in time. <laughs> and uh, when you see the dashboard here, and you can see a few virtual machines and stuff, and that's just go directly to the image. So now I have a few images here, and I can, in fact, let me just randomly search another image. Yeah. So you can see this, um, uh, I hope you can see here. So That's this not. is the cloud image from the Ubuntu, and I can just choose AMD64 as raw image. This is the link direct to that image. And I'm going to go back to the Harvester UI and going to create. And this, just paste the UI out here. So the image name will be automatically filled. And I can just click Create. Right, so now you can see we are trying to downloading this image in the menu. 
It's going well. Sorry, give me a moment. Yeah, I mean, this is nice. So you have uh, uh, the image that, you know, you just have uh, downloaded the raw version of the image and you have directly imported in, in Minio uh, via the UI. I mean, it's super simple. Uh, behind the scenes, it is obviously doing a lot of things, but yeah. it is super simple uh, over here. Yeah, so as long as you have the UI out to the image, then you can just import it here. So now if you want to just create a VM, that's also simple. And let me, s in fact, I haven't tried that image. It's the first time I pulled that. So <laughs> I was going to start VM with it, but something might go wrong. So I don't really know. Let's try it. Let's image which one is uh, Bonic server, right? So, and then I'm going to, you can take a look at say this, uh, CPU and the memory should be fine. And the volume by default, we have assigned like 10 G of space there. Networking, I just leave it to the like management network for now. And also cloud config, there are going to be some settings I need to use for me to able to log in. So one is I'm going to overwrite uh, the, the, the password for the default user. Another one is I'm going to set the network to DHCP, so they were going to be up with correct, uh, like an IP address. So I think that's it. Let me see. Not sure how it works. So once this is kind of started pending, and what he's doing, what he's doing right now is, uh, is starting creating the disk and for this uh, VM, and then pulling the image from the minion to this VM. So in fact, this um, this is a little bit like a copy going on, but in the future, when we uh, have the, the next version, which is uh, uh, the Harvester 0.2, we are going to enable another feature called the backing image, which is the new feature. In fact, we added in the Longhorn as well. So that feature is going to allow the same image to be used as the uh, the back image for the multiple VMs on the um, for multiple VM on the same node, and that should allow the uh, the starting time and to be much faster because we are not we only need to copy the image once and later the image copy will should be fine. So that one should be that time should be saved. All right, three hundred forty five megabits. It's still like copying it right now. Okay, oh, now the copy started. Yeah, copy has finished and the VM is starting. And let's see. Nice. Yeah. Oh, okay. I think it's hmm? interesting. I think that, 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 that error message just said I cannot find boot disk and now it's boot up. Yeah. <laughs> Okay. Yeah, let's wait for it to boot up. Okay, so let me see. Oh, I'm not sure the cloud. Oh, oh, okay. So in fact, the cloud uh, configuration has been already applied. And if you take a look at the IP here, you should be able to see one of them. The IP itself is 10.0, which is in fact assigned by, uh, by the Kubernetes as well. So this is the... Uh, yeah, one to 18.04. So I have another VM running already, and this is the night. This is the Ubuntu Focal, which is twenty oh four, and is cannot be accessed, accessed from the VNC due to like somehow they changed the configuration and they put every output into the serial console as well. But how I suppose that too? So you can select the console to be opened in as a serial console. And now should able to give you the login. Come on, come on.
Yeah, but this one you see a little bit different. So this VM I just thought before, they have in fact two network addresses. One is 10.0, 10 10 another one is 172.16, 91.8, which is in fact the, the internal IP address of the VLAN 70Y. 71 in our lab, in our uh, lab. So I can create another VM with the same VLAN networking. And if you just take a look at this one, uh, this VM 91.1-1 in fact has two networks. And one is default management network and another is VLAN 91. And the VLAN 91 was in fact defined here. So it's the VLAN, L2 VLAN networking with the VLAN ID 91. And those IDs has been uh, configured on the switch to be allowed to trunk into those, uh, those uh, on the switch and allow the communication uh, within the bare mental nodes. So this VLAN networking setting is only going to, is only available in the HDI mode uh, because when you do that, you need to know what's your network setting is and you need to set up your NICs on the physical NICs for the VLAN networking. And this is normally not really going to be allowed by the cloud providers because when you are using cloud, everything on the VLAN the switch program, this, those, those things are basically out of questions because you don't have a control over the switch anyway. All right, let's start another Ubuntu. This one is on the focal, right? Network, I'm going to add another network with, with the VLAN 91 as well. And copy a few configuration here. So now I'm going to create another VM with the, the different VLAN and to make sure that we, that VM cannot communicate with those two. So people who are watching, I mean, you can see how cool this is. So you are spinning up the VMs on the Kubernetes base as an infrastructure. I mean, you have bare metal server, you have Kubernetes on top of it, and then you are spinning up virtual machines. And uh, now uh, Sheng is showing like they are isolated from each other. So you can, you know, uh, you, you can use them. They can, they'll be isolated. So the workloads will be running. So basically it's a mini cloud that you are running. Uh, yeah. If you have your own, uh, your own like infra at, at home, like not a very small, uh, a decent infra at home, uh, a switch is a, a switch, and uh, so that you can configure uh, then on the on that. Uh, so it will be like running a small, small, small cloud on using uh, Harvester. So I think that's pretty interesting, and it's it's pretty cool, uh, especially for the home projects, uh, for the home lab enthusiasts who have their mini servers already there. So you can definitely try this out and uh, you know create VMs, manage them, and and all those things. Yeah. So in fact, we have a lot of users just approach to us, say, okay, so when can you get this to GA? And uh, they are waiting to like replace their. Um, well, I'm not going to bad words. They're not company, but they're going to they want to replace the Promux <laughs> with uh, with Harvester. But as, as frankly speaking, Harvester is still pretty new and. Definitely welcome to give it a try. But as you can see now, this is the 0 0.1 release, right? So we still have, a, I think, at least a few months or a few quarters ahead of us before GA. So uh, one word about, one thing about GA, we do want to, we have a like a stretch goal to GA the harvester by this year. And I, I'm hoping and um, basically, um, we are definitely working hard toward that goal, but yeah, so that's um, that's our target. So let's see, the 91, let me just start them one by one. So then it should be, yeah. All right, so this one has a uh, 91.8. In fact, one thing I need to do, okay.
Yeah, one thing is I have to remove that in order to for this experiment to work, I have to remove the default routing to go to the management networking. Yeah, of course the VM can if you have the management networking, VM in fact can reach to reach each other. Right. So but I so that's why I need to remove that routing rules there. Okay, so all right, so now let me see what's the IP address of this one. Yeah, so this is uh one seventy two sixteen ninety one dot ten. I can ping once. 72, 1691.8. It's our problem, definitely. And let's see the, this one from another network. All right, you can see this uh, this network in fact get a different IP address. It's uh, 92,007, right? So this is in fact in different VLAN. So let me try to ping the IP in the H1 net, 91 VLAN. Of course, it's not going to work, right? So because they are isolated by the VLAN, but of course I can still ping, just want to make sure that my network isn't broken. I can still ping the gateway of my current my current VLAN. So that is uh, this is the what's the our VLAN networking CI plugin is doing in the background to really create the VLANs for those VMs in order for them to have that proper isolation. Of course, it still haven't we still have the problem have the management networking and have to delete the route default route here, but that's going to be fixed in later. All right. Okay, so this is the demo part for the VLAN networking. Let me close this one. So there's another demo I want to do to show the like more from the UI perspective and, and how to do the installation. And if you go to like, for example, I can go with the use the case three OS. It's very simple and it's very small, so I use that for the example. And we choose the case where as the ISO, which I already pre-downloaded. In fact, before that, uh, we have building a function called VM template. Uh, by default, we have three template building: raw image, which is always going to be like the default, and ISO image based, which is when you trying to install using uh, ISO and the Windows ISO image based. Because Windows, if you install Windows, you are going to have a little bit more. Uh, configuration like you need to convert IO driver stuff, so you better use this um, template for the Windows installation. So here I'm going to use ISO image installation and select K3 OS AMD, and I don't think I need to change anything. And let's just create K3 OS VM and see how it works. It's going to take a minute. And the, you can see that from this template, we have a boot order set it up. And when you're looking at volumes, in fact, previously the, the VM we saw is like is cloud image, which is designed to be run as a server. But this one is the, the ISO, which is you would like expected to install the ISO and on the hard drive and then put into the hard drive. So that is the what we have here. So that's template it's going to enable a CD room disk automatically and using what you average choose as image to fill in this CD room disk and create another root disk for you for you to install your OS on. So let's go back and think I think this one is starting right now. Hmm. Yeah probably another Couple seconds. 
Okay, running. Okay. Now we are building, uh, booting into the case row as live CD and ISO. Of course, by looking at the live CD, you know this is the building into the ISO itself. All right, so logging with user rancher. And now you can see, in fact, yeah. So you can see that the rootfs is mounted at the slash, but in fact, it's the, the boot directory is SR0, which is the, the uh, ISO disk. So now assuming that we want to install the case OS and we're going to run the command to the case OS install. And I'm going to install this to the disk using VDA and no cloud init, no SSH password, no Wi Fi running as server token. Yes. So now the case OS is writing the data to install this old, the operation system into the, the hard drive of this VM. This just should take just a minute. All right, it's rebooted. And you can see that um, we have put into the hard drive directly and you can see the grub, uh, the menu is totally different because now is uh, we have installed KCRS on the hard drive. And this is the from the hard drive, which is VDA. Right, so now we can log in. Yeah, so now it's down. So currently, let me take a look at D5 again. And you can see that the file system is mounted at the slash dev VDA1, which proves that we are using the hard drive and the installation has been done. And this is all from the VNC console of the harvester. All right. So um, the next thing I want to show you guys is um, how we add a node to the harvester, right? So here, in fact, we have, a, if you are like manage your data center with Bellmental, you should be pretty familiar with this UI or of course, if you are using Dell. And this is in fact, the IPMI interface for uh, Dell PowerRidge as 630, right? So from this one, I can access to my Dell servers console virtually from, okay, I need to still log in again. From anywhere, as long as you have the network access. So, all right, let's take a look at the virtual console. Yeah, so in fact, once you loaded the harvest ISO into your Bellmental machine, and this is what we are going to see, you will see the harvest installer showing as the option for the GNU graph, and now I'm going to let it continue. So yeah, in fact, this machine boot up going to take a while, and we can just uh, wait here, or are there any other questions I can answer during the time? Yeah, uh, there are a couple, like, uh... Have you thought uh, about using Vagrant images on uh, Minion? Also, what format you use to package the OS image? Uh, is it the same as Docker Union file system? Um, no. So, the, in fact, uh, I don't. Um, the sense is the harvester itself. It can, if you have, a, if say in the future, uh, like you might have a like a mean, uh, like a vagrant, 
driver for a harvester and then you can start VM on the harvest itself. But the, the really the harvest itself is the design to be run on the like bare metal, right? So if you have a, um, and so harvester by itself is going to be packaged as ISO as any of like operation system and the package in the ISO and your, um, we are expecting you to load this harvester ISO into just what I showed before at IPMI and you have drive, you can just add a virtual like virtual disk there and make it boot up or you can have a PXE server. And that is also one of the uh, targets, one of the features we're going to add in the 0 0.2 release. So PXE server can help um, you to bootstrap your harvester cluster much easier. And so you don't need to like manually load your ISO into each biomental node, but that is going to be the major, uh, the, the major way of how we uh, envision harvester to be delivered because it's always, almost always going to be like running on the biomental node and it's going to be installed as the operation system from our operation system top off from uh, on that node. Of course, we also have the app mode. We can, uh, I can, I will demo it a little bit later. And that one, um, app mode doesn't require you to uh, run the ISO, but once is that, as I mentioned before, app mode has its own limitation and it's going to be, uh, also it's going to be deployed as a Helm chart. So you can just one click deploy it if you just want to give Harvest a try. And of course, given that if you node have ability to do the virtualization, hardware virtualization. All right. So that answers your questions. Yeah, we can continue now. Yeah. So currently, this is the an, another node in the same data data center. So now, I'm of course, I'm not going to form a new cluster. I'm going to join the existing cluster, which we have demoed before, and uh, we are using one hard drive for the installed harvester. That this is installed in OS, and this is the one we have to get it right otherwise they were not going to join so the ip address of the server yes and the token is in fact harvester the token is the way to um identify and make sure that is indeed the uh, machines you want add to the cluster so because all the machines are not in the cluster have the same token all right so i can have Okay, I think that my network froze up a bit. This password is going to be used as the root password for your once you put up into the harvester. So we don't need to have the SH key and we're going to use X4, which as the management network, which is like connect to the 10G uh, networking and network switch behind. No proxy, no clouding. And now we're starting installing harvester. So here is the, this, this installation will going to take a while. I will leave it here and I will switch to another node when so you can see that what's the experience once you complete the installation. So 41 is the, the, the first node in this cluster and is the one who created the cluster. Okay, I think there's a bug. The current status here is shown as running, not unknown. <laughs> yeah, but uh, the, the underlying system is still running. That should be no problem. So now, in fact, for this is the what you will see uh, if you complete the installation of the harvester. And now I'm going to can I can switch into this console and put in the password. And if you have any if you have deal with like when we are SX, it's a, it's very similar experience. You can have the password, and then you, um, you can see some over over um overview from this, uh, view, and then you can have a have a more 
after you have the password, you have more admin level of uh, access to the system. So in fact, here you should be able to get uh, group control command running. If I, yes, so now it's still like two nodes, and and because the third node I just adding haven't been finished the installation yet. So in fact, you can also see there are a bunch of pods running, and you might able to recognize this. In fact, is the other pods we had started as VMs like inside the harvester. So 91-1, 92-2, the one to test and the case row S, right? So you can also see a bit more like get NS and you can see the Longhorn is installed there, case row S installed there and the harvester installed, installed there, right? So we can take a look at the harvester system and see what has been installed. So how is the network controller, which is responsible for the uh, VLAN CNI plugin and the CDI service uh, service load balancer is not the same. CDI and the CDI, those part of uh, this, this is a part in fact of a covert. And we have a hard harvester itself is running here. And also we have four uh, minion instance, which is the, uh, when there are more nodes coming and those to be redistributed to the new node to ensure the highly available of your function. Okay, so this is the what the harvest itself looks like from the Kubernetes point of view. But in fact, the, really the point of uh, we are creating harvest and the design in this way is to make sure that even you don't have this knowledge, you should be able to steal from the UI you can operate and troubleshooting and whatever issues we have and operate UVM like you what however you want, right? So from this UI, you should have a lot of almost everything you wanted. And you can also notice that, in fact, we don't really talk about anything in the Kubernetes, uh, the term here. You can see this is called volumes. And in fact, this those are backed by the Kubernetes PV and PVCs, right? And also you can see that uh, on each virtual machines and uh, we are like, we are calling those networks and the, and the, we are saying we're exporting um, uh, the concept like uh, the, what's it, the virt virtio, which is of course familiar with the people like familiar with the, virt um, the virtualizations and the, those and the SS keys cloud config and those are everything is in fact more of the virtualization focus, the term, rather than what is like an, in the Kubernetes term. So uh, we're uh, uh, we're really trying to focus on like make the user experience of the non Kubernetes, um, uh, not the, the operators, not for with Kubernetes also can uh, enjoy and use um, the harvester. So that is the one of the design goals for the harvest project. And of course, there's something like from, if you look at the event, you might able to spot something like a container and the pods, and those are the raw message come from the Kubernetes. And for those part, we haven't, because they're probably going to aim on your troubleshooting and we haven't translated them and didn't translate them yet, but I can imagine that in the future, we may be able to do something about this part to still make sure you are able to troubleshooting your issues, but not really overwhelmed by the Kubernetes term here as well. All right. So I think there's one last thing I want to show, which is the, what I mentioned as the app mode or developer mode before. So here you might recognize this is just classical um, rancher environment and have a house demo cluster here and to enable to install um, Harvester on uh, just from the Kubernetes as a Helm chart in the app mode. And you can just install it as the, so, so okay, so I might want to mention here on the catalog, I put Harvester as a, as a catalog here and also specify that I want to install the 0 0.1 branch. And this is in fact can be used as uh, the Helm repo. I just click here and I'm going to install it. One thing to notice that not every, in fact, most of the Kubernetes cluster cannot be installed directly with Harvester because they are lacking of the hardware virtualization capability. Like basically the only cloud provider I know right now have the hardware 
uh, virtualization, like nasty the hardware virtualization per, uh, enabled by default is the digital ocean. And the Google Cloud also allow hardware virtualization, like nested virtualization. So you can run the virtualization inside VM, but that's require special image to do so. DigitalOcean is the easiest way, easiest way to get it running, but all others, there's no, um, uh, they don't really allow this, right? So, and also the nested virtualization is going to be much slower than the uh, developmental virtualization we just saw before. The performance gap is huge. So now from this um, from this view, we can see that the workload has been like deploying. We are also going to deploy the same um, um, like CDI and uh, the Longhorn and also Minion, the Harvest itself here in this form. But we do really only uh, have this form intended for developers and not really for the production like users, at least for now. In the meantime, let's check if the host has third host has been added or not. Still no. Okay. Is it guy still running? Oh, okay. Haven't started yet. All right. See that uh, the the uh, harvesting installation has been completed, and now the the machine just rebooted and now put up into the harvester. This one can close this one. All right. So this still deploying in this cluster. All right, let's check. Oh, uh, yeah, the 43 has been running. Let me see, okay. So now you can see the second computing node has been recognized is uh, 90.43, which is the one we just installed from the ISO. And now when you start like more v VMs and uh, they might be like scheduled to the second node and because those are like new nodes coming, right? So previously we have two nodes and now the 43 has been joined the cluster. So the age is like 53 seconds. Yeah, so just joined one minute ago. Let's see, this menu haven't finished yet. Yeah, I think it's almost there. Let me see if I can open the UI. Okay, in fact, UI is up already. So the default username password is admin password. Suppose you can change it. Now you can see, in fact, Harvester has recognized that three nodes we have in this cluster, which is we're showing cluster nodes. Okay. Yeah. So all three nodes has been added into the Harvester by default. Now we can, no, sorry, not this one. This one, yes. So you can see this is the, the in fact, the, uh, what we call the magic proxy behind the Rancher server. And now I can, let me try another one. Oh, this one is fine. Import this cloud image there too. Hmm? Oh, okay. I think I still have to wait for the menu to finish. All right, any questions now? This cluster is on DigitalOcean, right? 
Yes, this cluster is on DigitalOcean. You can see the its provision from here. Okay, so, and this is uh, RKE cluster or uh, the K3S? This is the RKE cluster, yes. Okay. Yeah, so I, I'm showing this just for the demo purpose. It's not some recommended way to run it. <laughs> yeah, but <laughs> in fact, you, you can do it. And uh, if you want to help with the harvest development, and just want or just want to give a harvester a try, and you you know that DigitalOcean can in fact offer the nested visualization, and you might you you can you can try it on there. Yeah, I mean there are uh, some of the things like uh, people want to try it on Jetson Nano, and, uh, and then uh, Detlef. I don't know whether I'm pronouncing your name right or not. So he did uh, run successfully on Proxmox with some. Uh, oh, okay. virtualization and configurations. Yeah, so he, I think Proxworks support nested virtualization as well. Yeah, yes. but he he said you do have to do uh, some network configurations, uh, VLAN, Quink VLAN. In my case, on your infrastructure network. Yeah, he's there on Harvester Slack, and uh, so I asked him like if there are any notes that he is preparing, then we can you know share it with the community. Like if anybody wants to try it out on on Proxmox as well. Yeah, sure. Yeah, in fact, in fact, you can also try it out on the VMware and the Nutonix if you have the setup. And uh, of course, you still need to program the switch and stuff to to get VLAN network running, but. Well, that's uh, at least you can we can both try before we can replace them. Okay, so is this thing ready yet? Okay, so Minio finally up. Let me see this one. Okay, let's try. Uh, yeah, I know there's another issue that um, once the Helm chart has been, like in, if you install a Helm chart, that's going to be a temporarily like one minute network arrows due to some reason in the 0 0.1 release and it will pass. Okay, I think it just passed. All right, so that started on the, in fact, this is a Ranger cluster. Uh, I think I can give it a little bit more CPU. I'm just going to start it. Well, this is going to take a while because the the speed of nested virtualization is not really as good as the elemental nodes. Yeah, so we have a question as well, like, uh... Will there be an option uh, to select the node uh, a virtual machine is running on, perhaps to move uh, from one harvester node to other? Yes. So um, currently on the boot up, we don't uh, offer option to select node, but I can imagine that's pretty uh, straightforward thing to do. And also in the Zero Two release, and uh, I think we uh, might just in time to support live migration, uh, like uh, a feature of the hub. Um, so then you can, when you want to like give maintenance on one node, then you can line migrate whatever uh, what, uh, like VMs on that node to another node and do the maintenance. And uh, then you can rebalance over once uh, everything is down. Yeah, so that migration feature is planned and will be supported. So yeah, I think it's uh, a YAML, uh, it's a Kubernetes concept. Uh, so you have a node selector that can be used to you know, schedule a workload on a specific oh, node. Uh, um, in fact, that's so uh, on, on VMs, you can also select, uh, normally you can also select uh, VMs on which node to run. If you are, for example, running on the, the say, ESX or vSphere, those, but that's, um, mm, so that but that is only going to be, say, one specific node is, uh, I don't, I'm not sure it's going to be like, say, a run on this group of nodes, it might be also possible. But it's not going. Um, 
in the end, it might be as uh, flexible as what the node selector is. Yeah. Be because in the end, it's all parts underneath. As yes. long as you have the host to satisfy the requirement, it should be allowed to run there. And also, Shang, like how can people contribute uh, to, to Harvester? Yeah, so the, um, the Harvester project is hosted at uh, Anjan Harvester. And you can see the old developed progress here. And also, um, the if you found any issues, and uh, you can post it here. And also, um, of course, reach out to us through the Slack. And also, and, and in the meantime, we are also working on a flow workflow to um, triage and uh, uh, to um, like f f uh, label some f uh, issues for the newcomers and the people who want to like contribute to the harvester. Uh, at this time, we're most focusing on that. If you have any user cases that you think harvester might or might not address. And, but you didn't see it right now, and just feel free to talk with us and also tell us whatever issues you might see doing using Harvester, because as, as I mentioned, this is 0 0.1 release. It's the, the first, like the first alpha. You can, you can consider this as alpha quality. There are definitely going to be many issues there, right? So we have tried our best to test out all the corner cases, but if you found anything, let us know. We are trying our best to fix it too. Okay, so VM is finally starting. Oh, finally. Yeah, so it's, it's running. This happens again, right? Remember that? Yeah, yes. <laughs> this should pass again. <laughs> Yeah, I don't remember last time I pr press any key. Oh, do I? No. Okay. Not sure where that come from. <laughs> All right. So on this uh, digital ocean cluster, we got a uh, harvester running, and in fact, it uh, depends on the nested visualization. So performance is not that well, but at least. Um, this is something if you have access to, you can easily try and harvest on this. And uh, that's also what's, what you are saying and what you feedback. Yeah, All even right. uh, uh, Detlef uh, faced this. So just restart the VM. I'm seeing this a couple of times. <laughs> OK. <laughs> All right, so this concludes my demo. Let me, yeah. Awesome. So, uh, folks who have who have been watching with us and who will be watching later. So we have, uh, you know, uh, explored Harvester and the concepts, the building blocks, the architecture that looks very simple. But beneath there, there is a whole repository of code that is doing all the work that you can check out uh, and uh, obviously contribute as well. Uh, at a very early stage, but uh, looks promising and has a lot of features already in uh, even at the alpha stage. Uh, so you can think when it goes GA, so you know how much more stable and reliable and uh, feature rich it would be uh, when you are just uh, spinning up the VMs on a bare metal. And even uh, you can test it out on a nested, uh, if you have nested virtualization enabled. So you can just uh, test out on, on any of the uh, like wherever you can get that, so you can test it out on on the nested virtualization as well. So uh, thank you, Sheng, for for the amazing demos. Uh, so demos make things more clear, and uh, you have almost explained uh, all the scenarios, the UI, the bare metal, uh, joining the node, and even uh, on the nested virtualization on uh, and uh, spinning up harvester there, and then spinning up the VM as well, and even uh, uh, uploading a new new image. Uh, onto Minio and then pulling from there and spinning up a VM 
So uh, thank you for all these amazing demos. And uh, I hope the audience has learned a lot about Harvester. And probably, yes, this is, this is something new and a uh, uh, new approach. Uh, so probably you have to get hold on to the concepts and you should be, I mean, a little bit familiar with the, with the term, terminology of Qbert, uh, of what all things they do internally. Uh, and then you can use, if you just want to use, probably you can just install and, and see. And, but if yeah. you want to contribute, you should definitely be knowing the concepts and uh, uh, do contribute uh, because that's, that's how the community makes uh, the product more stronger that's what has happened yeah. with Rancher. that's what's have happened with k3s so yeah yeah thank you sam for for this opportunity and it was really pleasure to talk with you and uh, hear those uh, questions from the audience so the really as uh, as you said as uh, the harvest project is still very young it's still very early so um you can help us to improve it you can your your contribution and and you are not well be reflected on the product. That's in fact one of the things we, as Ranch Labs, or now in the SUSE, we did a very we did a very good job of. That's the very part the part we're very proud of. We take feedback very seriously, and we incorporate feedback in our product to make the product works better for our customers, for our users. So that's the one part we never uh, we never going to like divert from. And uh, please help us on, on the getting um, improving this uh, harvest product. And also, I'm really looking forward to see all of uh, the contribution, the feedbacks in the future. So feel free to reach us through the Harvest Slack channel, which is on the Rancher user channel, Harvest channel, Rancher user Slack Harvest channel. And also, uh, if you have any issues, uh, file ticket at uh, Rancher slash Harvester in the GitHub channel. And we are looking forward to see you then. Yep. Uh, just one last thing that I would like to conclude uh, about the stream and uh, some of the work. Just a, a small thing, not very big. I'll take a few minutes. So, so hope you are able to see the screen. Uh, so this is basically a book that I recently wrote. Uh, Let's learn CK scenarios. Uh, if you are preparing for Kubernetes CK certification, you can just go and uh, buy this book. Uh, it basically covers the scenario, 52 pages book. It has around 15 to 16 scenarios. And uh, for the gold pack, there are video solutions that you get immediately. So I'm pasting the link in the chat. Um, also, uh, subscribe to the channel. I always forget to say, uh, but uh, subscribe to the channel uh, so that uh, I, I can do, because it gives motivation to do more. And the next stream is next week uh, with uh, uh, about Graal VM. So it's with the founder of Graal VM. Uh, and we'll, we'll explore what Graal VM is, how to use that. And again, we'll have a lot of demos. And uh, uh, probably that would also be interesting. So thank you, Sheng. Just stay on for a minute, and I'll close the live stream. Uh, just do you want to say any any uh, last words to uh, to the audience? Yeah, yeah. I think um, I think uh, I really have I really uh, grateful to have this opportunity to talk with all you guys, and this is really a pleasure. And uh, well, have a good day, have a good night, and uh, hopefully, hopefully, you enjoy the presentation, the demo, and enjoying the conversation as well. And thank you, Sam. Yeah. Awesome. Thanks. Thank you for coming over here and explaining the demo de in details about Harvester. And thank you, the community, for joining and people who will be watching late. So till then, see you. Bye. Bye. Have a nice day. Take care.